So I thought I'd just do a quick editing video of how I figure out what images I'm going to use for the self-portrait. So right now we're going to be working on the peacock self-portrait. And you can see my periscope of that in another video. So I loaded all the images into Lightroom. And then I have now categorized the images. So if they have to do with the pe if they have to do with the peacock self-portrait, I've given them a blue um category category rating. That's just so that I can separate it out from all the other shoots I did yesterday. Then out of so now I'm gonna click blue so that only the blue images come up. Um I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. There we go. Um, so here are all the blue images. These are all the peacock that have to do with the peacock self-portrait. And then I've subcategorized those. If they have to do with the mask, then I put a one star. If it has to do with the dress, I put three stars. And if it's just a background shot like this, I just did two stars. I don't usually use the stars that way. I do usually use the stars for ratings. But for this, it works out really well. I'm able to categorize things so that I can go through and only work on one section. Like, take for example, I'm going to be working on the ratings of one, which is just the mask. Now I end up having 26 possible face shots. A lot of them are going to be fairly similar. and. I've already kind of gone through this, so the first thing I would do, though, is to make sure that everything is in focus. They are. I, I nailed it yesterday with my focus. No problems there. Occasionally, I will step off my mark on a self-portrait, and a photo will be out of focus. And I chuck those right away. I, I don't need it. It doesn't, you know, those get an X, they're out. These ones are all great. I already kind of checked that. And then I just go through... And I'll zoom in on the face, usually. And if you didn't watch my periscope yesterday, I don't want the arm up like that. It had to do with the way that the mask was. The mask would not let me pin it. I tried everything to get it to pin. And since I didn't have an assistant that could probably have pinned it for me with several bobby pins and stuff, I just have my arm up. And I'll have to edit out my arm. So I'm only focusing on the face and the expression and making sure my eyes, there I'll show you on this one, making sure my eyes are coming through the mask because I, you want to be able to see my eyes here. That's what I'm looking for. I'm also looking that these little fringy right here, these things are making a nice little arc around the face that they are not coming at the camera that's why my face had to turn a little, because I wanted it to frame the face. Remember, picture the arm is completely down. And then I had to turn my face just the way that the mask was built. The mask was kind of built, having those come out a little bit more. And I like the way that this one works. I actually like this one. This facial expression, I like that you can see my eyes. And I like the way the mask looks. I have given it a, uh, I flagged it as a possible. And then I'm just kind of making my way. I'm, I'm at about, let's see, I'm zoomed in and I just want to look at heads. There's a couple here where I'm like, eh, not so much. See, my eyes are a little darker in there. I do like that I use that other arm. And I'll probably be looking for that as I go on. I like when I have the arm not away from the little fringies. It will help with uh, editing much easier. Wish I would have thought about that while I was out shooting yesterday. But at least I did a few like that. And I'm just making my way through different faces. Some of them I turn my head more. Some of them my mouth is open more. I'm just kind of seeing if something strikes me. Sometimes I'm looking like this is a good example of this one I am looking too far up. It, it looks funny. I am... If you see my eyeball, it's looking too far up. I don't want to be like I'm looking up into a tree. And that happens occasionally on a few of these, I've noticed. And, and that's okay. I've, I do already have one I like. But I just make it go through here. 
that one actually looks pretty good. Even though I'm looking up, I'm not looking up as bad as that other one. And I do like the facial expression. And quite frankly, it's not an exact science. I am just, I just want to feel. I am going, it's going to pop out at me. And that's part of being both the model and the artist and the director and the photographer and all of it. I usually know immediately when I scroll through these, I've got, what did I say? I have 26 of these masks ones. It's going to pop out at me. They're, it's going to just say, that's it. That usually happens, or at least I'm going to get it within three or four. And then I'll be able to match it with what might be easier to edit or what might be easier to match the body to how my head was turned. And so I'm just going through here. And I can also show you how I screw up. I wanted this one to be straight on, forward to the camera. I wanted that option in case I chose it. Um, mask is not fitting well. You can't see my eyes. I don't like my facial expression. I have no idea what's going on with the hair. But I want to show you that because that is why I take quite a few photos while I'm out there. And I... I turn my head every different way. I don't want to just go out there and take one and then say it's good. It took me two hours yesterday to go out there and do this. And if I'm going to take that much time to go out and drive somewhere, find the location, I want to make sure I get it right. If this had been the only one I took, yes, I could have made it work. I am sure I can bring up my exposure and play with those eyes. Well, I mean, I wouldn't bring it that bright, but just for the eyes. Um, yeah. But I just want to show that sometimes I don't get it right. And that is why I take 26 photos of me in a mask. Here's another example where the sun ended up hitting my face. I really don't want the sun hitting my face. Earlier on, the sun was also hitting my dress. And I'm going to have to play around and pick, pick and choose when the sun wasn't hitting me. I was in an area of a forest where the sun was going in and out of the trees. And so just as the sun, as I was there, the sun was moving. And there were different times when it, the light dappled on either my dress or face. So like this one, I would take out. And then you also figure out what you don't like. I do not like the face straightforward. I don't like it at all. I'm not even, a couple of these are better. Like this one's better than the one I mentioned earlier. But I'm not liking it. However, this one's not so bad. I need to pose this up so I don't completely look naked in this video. Um, it's hard to see, but as you can tell, you can see my eyes better. My head is only turned slightly, not as much as dramatic as it was turned in a few of those other ones. So that one could work. Anyways, this is just going through my process of why I, how I narrow down things. I just kind of look, see and get a feel. So then what I do is I take, I, I hit to have all the flagged. So I picked seven out of the 26 that I thought could work. And then I'll have to narrow it down from there as far as which one, which face I want. This one might be turned too far that way for what I want. I do want to see that second eye. Oh, I do like that one. Yeah, now that I'm seeing it, and I like that one as far as if I'm going to be forward facing, although I look really angry, and I don't know why I look angry there. And I don't want to look angry, although peacocks don't really look happy. But anyway, so that's what I do. Usually I just kind of go through here. I'm going to, once I... Um, once I figure out which one I want, then I'll set it aside, and then I'll move on to the dress portion. So at this point, I've given no image a star number five. I have star images for numbers one, two, three, and four based on my sorting. So when I find a mask face that I like, I'm now giving it a five-star rating, and then only the ones I want to work with for my composite will get a five-star rating. And I'm not 100% sure, so I'm going to pick a few of these masks. And the reason why, like that, my head's turned too much. I don't like that one. Because once I pick a body and a shoulder and an arm, I'm going to need probably about three heads to, to make sure that the neck 
will match up with whatever piece of the body that I end up using. And also just to make sure that the arms match up as well. I like this one because it go, the arm is on this side, rather, and it matches up nicely with even like this one. So no matter which one of those I use, I'll probably have to merge those together just to get both arms out of it. This one has a little issue with um, the mask here, but they're all pretty relatively close. And so I give them a five and I'll come back. So now I've got just three to choose from. And now I'll be going on to working with the dress. So I've now loaded my images of the dress. I have 25 possible to work from. And quite frankly, half, well, no, maybe not half, maybe a third of those have dappled lighting on them and will not be able to be used as well. So I'm going to try to pull from probably about the 18 that could work. So I'm just kind of looking and I don't 100% know what I want. So not only, I'm not worried about, right at this point, I am not worried about looking for arms or a, a, the dress looking normal. I am just looking for things like, see how this, the bodice stays normal, but this goes out in that line. That's, that's good. Because the dress will normally go down here, and I would just stitch this little, this little part, and then obviously my shoe would be gone. And you would just see a little flail out just ever so of that dress. And that might be all I need. I might not do really fancy. I just, I'm not 100% sure yet when I get in, when I get into editing it, I will know. But so far this one's good. So I'm going to, I like the way that it looks like that. This one is where I started falling over and you can tell, I mean, look at that. I'm not even on, I mean, I'm completely falling over and it's, it's, it's too much. Like now my I'm too bent. So, you know, that's why I choose, say, this. It is the upper body is in the same spot as what my, my base image will end up being. I can already tell that. So that's what you want to look at when you're doing composites is I could probably make this work. If this is the only image, then I'll rotate it and I could make it work. But why make more work on myself if I have another image that maybe my body is more up straight. And I'm still not seeing on that leg that I like that. This one's pretty good. This is just a flat, um, nice flat bottom without shoes. Could totally use that. I don't know yet. Um, and this is unique. Normally I could see somebody saying, why would you even use this? I actually like how rippled it is. I could take this, layer it over, and it would look like the dress is fluffier than it really is. So I'm just going to flag that for right now. Okay, this one I don't like as much as the other one, so we just move on. Oh, that's kind of pretty. Do I have one from the front? Okay, so here I am. I'm, this is when I was spinning. And if you watch the periscope, you got to watch me get dizzy. Another thing I really like about this one is, how, look how dark that is underneath there. It looks like I'm floating. That's kind of cool. That I'm actually doing another portrait. That I might be able to... I gotta flag that just so that I... Get that in my other portrait that I'm doing. Now this is when I brought in the sheet. So, so far, I just want to show you what I have so far. So I've got... Going off to the left. Quite frankly, I can... I didn't really get a good one with the shoe going the other way. And maybe in my earlier ones I did. Let's see. Oh, that one would have been good. But see the dappled light I'm talking about. It just... I do not want to work with that. I'd want it all even one light. But if this is the only one and I do decide to go with doing it symmetrical like that, I will cut and paste around here, flip it, and then add it onto this other side. That's fairly easy. Then I got a nice base. See, a base. I, just, I don't know whether on my base image if my dress is there, but in case it's not, I got it here. And then just some fun ripply. There, and then one of me twirling. I'm twirling just ever so. That's kind of fun. And now I'm going to be looking at the bed sheet. These ones I'm not 100% sure. I do like this. Like, this one looks good because you can tell on this one that I've got it in the right placement. And I can work with that. Not so much. Sometimes the sheet did not fold out well. This is a great one. Because it's flowing, and 
I can move this. I can move this anywhere. I can take out this white and just use the, the, the motion of this blue in different areas. Again, not sure I'm going to, but the option's there. There was not a lot here for the dress. And just for the sake that I know that there's not a lot here for the dress, because of the dappled lighting to take away quite a few of my options here, I very well will keep the dress normal. And just do something simple like this. I, I kind of like that idea. Now that I'm getting in here. See, this is how my process works. I look at the images and they just strike me. And that's that's the nice thing about having the vision. I write, I do a sketch. Um, speaking of the sketch, while I am... I should probably show you the sketch of what this is going to look like. So that you can see. This is my vision. So as you can see, I have the dress kind of more poofier. This is kind of how I wanted it. I wanted it to take up the whole frame. But I have enough of this peacock background of the peacock feathers. I might just have the peacock feathers go all the way to the ground. And then just poof the dress a little. And then I'm going to actually use this background. This is the background I'm going to overlay into it. Um, this kind of blurry forest and so I'm done with the dress. Now I just have to look at my body and arm shots. So I've gone ahead and loaded all the possible body and arm shots. I have it narrowed down to 22 that are selected. I did that because I took out all the ones with the weird dappled lighting. I took out all the ones that were me twirling or doing other things and because I want to narrow it first to see if I can just find one that will work the easiest and not worry about. So a few of these also have some dappled lighting, but they could work for an arm, and that's the only reason why I kept them. My idea, or my goal, would be to find one or two of these that could work for both an arm and a body. Or at least two of the three. I got it because I have the mask on in a few of these. This one might work. I've got just a plain body and my arms are out. I'm not doing anything fancy. There's no... The dress does go all the way to the ground. My head's probably turned fairly correct. I'm going to pick this one because I just, it just... It looks like something I could work with. That's all I'm looking for in this section is something I could work with. Because I will pull all the final images together at the very end. And those ones, I'll see at that point, I'll probably have to pull them into Photoshop and work with them just to match it up and see which ones I want to use. So I'll just kind of quickly, these all look like they have some dappled lighting. So I'm going to look, just kind of looking. I do like that where, oh, wait a minute. Maybe I like the body turned a little bit more. Oh, I like the hands and the body movement. Kind of like the body turned just a little bit. And I like my hands here. Also, my nails are painted. I got acrylic nails on. So I have to fix that in Photoshop. Luckily for this uh, self-portrait, my nails are blue. So I just have to paint over the, that light blue on this one nail. But I do like the arm movement. See the difference? It's so subtle. This is why I do this. I just feel like this is a better, a better picture. But I'm not 100% sure that the head will fit on it. Again, why I will flag both of those. Then I want to look at having one with both my arms behind my back. Uh, this one's got quite a bit of dappled lighting. I'm not sure I even want arms. Maybe I just want my arms. Peacocks don't have arms. And so it depends on how authentic I'm trying to make this look of peacocky or just a woman in a peacock dress or... What I end up doing once I get into Photoshop. Uh, and so I wanted one option of arms behind my back. This one, the lighting is not favorable, which is a shame. Because both arms are behind my back. And there is no other photo where both my arms are behind my back. Oh, except for this one. Let me see. But the dress is not. And I kind of like the other stance. So now I'm going to have to look at... Where I've got one arm behind my back. Let's see. I've got one arm here behind my back. 
and then one arm here behind my back. And I would just have to merge those. So those are both getting flagged. Oops. That's a pretty simple edit to merge merge these two. My body's in relatively the same. You can see that. Oops, what am I doing? I hit the wrong button. My body is in relatively... I do like this. I would use this as my base. That is a nice um, way that the dress looks. And the dress looks nice and flowy. And then I would just add... Kind of like how I liked this this dress. It just has that movement to it. And I might not even edit. That could be how it looks. So that is how I've picked the dress and the arms. And then after that, I will... Then I select all of the ones that have been finalized. So that I could get an idea of how my head it how my head and body might look. So I just see all my flagged photos. So these are all the ones I've kind of flagged. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to go back and give five stars to the ones that I really want to work with. So now I've gone through and I sorted the the winners. This is the final eight out of all the images I took yesterday. These eight will make a composite for the final peacock image. I did not include things like the fl like a really fluffy dress part. I kept those flagged so I can go back in if I want to change the dress. I'm going to start with a base image first. So that is why those images are not in here. So then what I do is I'm going to go over, and this is just for my own sake because I will forget. This is a face shot. So I'm going to write in my tags, mask. And I do that because then when I export it out, it will remind me that this was a mask shot and not a hand or a dress shot. And then I'll go to the next one. This was also a possible mask. So I'm just going to type in mask again. Go to my next one. Now this is an arm shot. It's... Let me see. Let me look. So this is just the arm. Um, and so I'm just going to write arm. But then on this next one, this is, I like the dress and the arm. So I'm going to write arm, comma, dress. So that I know. This one is, I'm just going to write that I like it for the hands or for the arms again. Um, but what on this one, I really like, like, I really like this one. So I'm going to signify that as arms dress. And then I'm just going to write that I really like it. I really like so that I remember that this is the one I would like to have as my base. And then we'll go through here. This is just, I'm going to write, um, dress. I'll know that that is for that. My foot's in it. It's very obvious what it's there for. This is also mask. And I did that because a very specific reason. You might think it's obvious, but it's not. Watch this. These are for my arms, right? But there's also a mask on those. And I could very easily get a little turned around or I'm not going to be, have time to edit these probably for quite a few days. And if I pull this back up in three weeks, I might not remember at all that I wanted this as the arms and not the mask. That is why I personally like to use those key tags. It helps for my own editing. So I pulled this up. This is just so you can see kind of where my vision is that these eight images will combine together to make one final image. And thank you for tuning in today on how I sort my self-portrait images. It's a video I have not done before. I will probably not get a chance to edit this for quite a while. I might even work on it while I'm doing other things outside the house in a couple weeks. And I my plan would be I'm going to go through now in Lightroom and just fix, like, this one in particular is darker than the others. And I'm going to match them all up 
so that they all look um, the same as far as exposure and white balance. I don't care about the coloring, and I don't care about it being perfect. I All I want are... I want the dress to be fairly flat lit and normal because when I do my composites, I would rather have it be completely flat and easier to composite and I can add in shadows and dramatic depth in Photoshop later than having to try to edit shadows and contouring while I'm trying to composite. That's how I do it. Maybe other people don't. I don't use heavy lights. I don't. I like... Just the base image, it makes it easier for me. And anything that makes it easier is how I do it. So after I match these eight up, I will export them in one folder together. And then I'll probably put these on my laptop because I can do my composites on my laptop. I don't have to be sitting at my my desk. I can do this during football practice. I could do this while we're on our way driving somewhere that's like an hour or two away. I could do this on vacation. I, you know, any of those places, I could do this while sitting on my couch while watching football, because if I'm working on just a composite, I don't, my laptop is not calibrated, so I can't edit client photos on it. But I can do composites on it, because I don't care about the coloring. Once I get the full composite, my PSD file of all the layers, I'll shoot it back onto this, my main computer, and make sure that everything is lined up right and then I'll flatten it to edit it for the final where I do go in and add things like the extra shadows and dark and light areas I will burn and dodge and give my color overlay so thank you for tuning in today that's me editing or me choosing my images for a self-portrait if you're not already you can follow me several different areas however most of these are not posted yet this is actually a 2016 project. You are getting sneak peeks at what I will be posting in 2016. I'm trying to get basically an entire gallery ready before I start posting these and going live. But you can follow me. I am a portrait photographer and I do have other fun self-portraits that are not more fine art but that are just kind of goofy and fun and silly and you can check those all out at AngelaMarvelPhotography.com, Facebook.com, backslash Angela Marvel Photography. I'm also on Flickr, and I'm pretty sure my username there is A Marvel. You can find me on Snapchat at A Marvel Photo. And you can find me on Instagram at Angela Marvel Photography. Thank you for tuning in.